Imagine this. You wake up one day and find yourself with a dozen missing assignments. You get a notification that another grade has dropped. While this inability to work troubles you, you can't help but react with inaction. This is the situation I found myself in towards the end of my freshman year. Those close to me refer to it as the rut. I define the rut as a point in my life wherein I had the intent to achieve, but was lacking both the motivation and the discipline to truly achieve everything that I wanted. This lack of motivation was far off from the person I was just months before the rut. I had always found the genuine joy in my work. However, this positive momentum of work was broken by a chain of difficult situations occurring in my life at the same time. While these difficulties and these situations are normal and arguably essential for our betterment, what struck me was my difficulty to return back to my usual work ethic after this period of dormancy. This led me to look into what kind of factors place a push or pull effect on our exerted effort. And before I outline these and how they apply to your life, I'd like to speak about them conceptually. Complacency can be defined as a feeling of calm with one's abilities or situation to an extent it prevents you from trying harder. Satisfaction, on the other hand, can be described as a feeling of fulfillment or happiness with your current situation in life. These two are often used interchangeably. However, they distinguish themselves with their long-term effects, which are satisfaction while providing a sense of completion does not correlate to a complacent pattern of life. Think of it like this. Satisfaction in life should act as fuel stations along the highway for refilling motivation and energy. What defines success anyways? So I can assure you that everyone in this room has a different answer to that very idealistic question. For the purpose of conversation, we can say that success is the attainment of a long-term goal and ask a better question. What choices differentiate someone with the ability for success with someone that actually attains this measure? The short answer, success is attained using consistent effort, strategic changes, and exercise resilience, which means working towards your goals while valuing your work and staying away from complacent patterns. The long answer, however, we can surprisingly find in a childhood fable, the hare and the tortoise. A simple summary for those of you who are unfamiliar with the story. A hare and a tortoise decide to race against one another. The day of the race comes up and they both assemble at the starting line. Before you know it, the race, the hare has a huge head start and he soon gets to a point where he can no longer see the tortoise. Now he thinks there's absolutely no way the tortoise could beat me, so he decides to rest right before the finish line. He finds a nearby tree and rests his head on it and before you know it is counting sheep. Slowly but surely, the tortoise catches up with him and crosses the finish line, astounding both the half-awoken hare and all of the other animals. Now, the story may seem simplistic and a fun way to teach children about the importance of hard work, but the hare's inconsistent effort leads itself into our conversation. Now, let's analyze what the hare could have done or should have done in order to achieve his goal, which obviously in this case is winning the race. The hare falls prey to complacency since he feels comfortable in the fact that he will win the race. So what he should have done was use the satisfaction derived from his early lead and carry through with effort consistently and easily beat the hare, he beat the tortoise. I'd like to make a correction to the moral of this story. Because slow and steady doesn't always win the race because consistent and efficient has the best shot. We've already seen how complacency affected the hare and how it prevented him from winning an easy race. However, it's important to understand that these limitations that these complacent patterns place on our lives are self-imposed. In her book, The Mountain Is You, Brianna West states that if there's an ongoing gap between where you are and where you want to be, self-sabotage is almost always at work. She states that these complacent patterns are self-sabotage often rooted in a fear of failure. Positively so, she does also state that because these are self-imposed, we within ourselves are capable of overcoming them. These concepts can seem tricky, uh, and more tricky than they actually are, so I'd like to place them into a separate context, and I'm going to move over so you can actually see the graph that I'm speaking about. This graph of the heating curve of water 
is one that you may find in a grade eight science textbook. Now you may ask, what relevance does this have to the discussion of perseverance? Well, I looked at this graph for a decent bit, and this may seem like a stretch, but I'm gonna need you to hear me out. What I noticed was that the trajectory of water and its transformation amongst its different states resembles our path towards our goals. A key thing to notice is the plateaus at zero degrees and 100 degrees Celsius. These, not coincidentally, are when changes in temperature occur. And they're also known as plateaus. A plateau is basically uh, a point in time with little or no change after a period of excessive progress or activity. Funnily enough, for this change in, change in form to occur, there needs to be a plateau in the increase of temperature or energy. So what may seem like a period of life where you're making absolutely no progress is just a period of reformation and transformation. Another key thing to notice about this graph is how the curve moves consistently across the x-axis, which basically shows a need for consistent effort throughout your journey, no matter the minor setbacks and periods of stagnation. You can also place these concepts into an economic context. Now, the graph that you're seeing is the business slash um, the economic cycle graph. Um, and it shows the relationship between the real GDP and the passing of time. The real GDP, for those of you who are unaware with uh, economic jargon, is just an economy's total output in adjusted for inflation. Now, this is most definitely another stretch, but I'm going to need you to think of the x-axis as the passing of time, which it already is, and the y-axis, or real GDP, as what your goals are and what you want out of your life. Now. This, site, this graph can actually be quite insightful to our discussion, so I'd like to contextualize it a bit more. There are three key macroeconomic goals, economic growth, economic stability, and full employment. When looking into two of these goals, specifically economic growth and economic stability, you'll soon find that they're counterproductive. Better stated as, economic growth requires economic instability. Sp when comparing this or relating it to our lives, what it means is that progress or exponential progress requires instability, which teaches us that taking risks is often the only way to get better because all you can do with the risks and, ta and failures is to learn from them and move forward towards your goals. Another key thing to notice is the peaks and the troughs and how you move through recessions and expansions and the cyclical structure of the graph, which is basically because of the trade-off between progress and risks. It shows us that there are constant ups and downs, but that consistent effort is what gets us through them and to what we need and what we truly want to achieve. I'd like to revisit the anecdote that I brought up at the start of my speech, the rut. And I'd like to tell you how I got out of that rut. So, firstly, I'd like to specify what specifically I was missing at that time, and those two things were motivation and discipline. What I did was I approached them separately. For motivation, a helpful tactic was setting long-term goals, because the key issue with my motivation was that it was hard for me to understand what my current actions finally led up to. So, what setting these goals did for me was it showed me that today's input was tomorrow's output and every single goal had specific actions I needed to take today for me to be able to achieve them in the long term. Discipline, on the other hand, was a bit more tricky because I'd figured out motivation. I wanted to do it. I was capable of doing it. So why didn't motivation work? Because as we all know, motivation isn't something that's consistent. It isn't something that is always there. It comes and goes in waves. So I had to figure out how I was gonna make myself consistently work towards my goals. The trick that I came up, for this, came up with for this was external accountability. This included stuff like time locking on Google calendars, setting alarms for when things needed to be done rather than when I needed to start them. And this, and I used to set timers for the amount of time I would give myself to do something with 10 minutes removed from it to create that sense of urgency. And obviously we can't forget the large whiteboard that still hangs up in my room with 
everything I need to get done for the day and the long-term goal that it correlates to. I'm not gonna say that the rut was a fun time or that I enjoyed it. I mean, there's a reason I put my everything into getting out of it. But what it did give me was it gave me a chance to put into place these systems that help me work efficiently, but more than that, help me find satisfaction in everything that I'm doing. Today, I'm a year out of the rut and honestly working at a higher level than I was before the situation even happened. Okay, so what can you take away from this? If you want to implement these variables into your own life, you should develop a candid evaluation of where you once were and where you'd like to be. Additionally, you should take some time to understand variables like motivation and how they place this omnipresent effort on your motivation and your momentum in life. Most importantly, find satisfaction in your journey, keep inside objective and use passion and discipline as driving forces throughout everything that you do. Thank you.